In the grim darkness of the far future, explosive rounds whiz through the air, chainsaws rave hungrily, and armored feet hammer against the broken ground. The indomitable angels of death wage unrelenting war against the unstoppable plague marines in Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. Hello there. In this video, we're going to show you how to paint the angels of death and plague marines kill teams from the Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team starter set. The paint we'll be using are on screen now. You can also find a paint list in the description below. We also have a list of the additional equipment we've used, but you can use whatever brushes you feel most comfortable with. If you're new to painting or want to brush up on your skills, you can check out our Painting Essentials playlist to learn all about our paints and techniques. Before we get painting, we first need to build our models. Building them is super simple, and we can use the guide that comes in the box to help us. You'll notice that you can just pop the miniatures off the sprue. Gently push at the connection points and the bits will come off for you. There's no need for any glue. Simply line up the correct pieces and carefully push them together. You should have your miniatures built in no time at all, and then we can crack on with the painting. When it comes to the terrain in the box, it's a real treat. For the first time ever, you can find ready-to-use terrain that is absolutely awesome and super simple to put together. The first thing we'll need to do is an undercoat. We'll be using our pot of McCrag Blue to do this. Don't worry if you haven't heard of undercoating before, it's really simple. This is where we apply a paint to the whole model, and then this acts as a foundation for all our other paints to stick to. It's normal for the paint to settle and separate in the pot over time, so give it a good shake until it's a smooth, even color. While you're shaking, be sure to hold your finger or thumb over the lid to prevent it from opening accidentally. Then, push the lid until it clicks to the tab at the back to help keep the pot open while you use it. Wet your brush with a little water, wipe any excess away so it's damp but not sodden, and load the bristles with a little paint from the reservoir inside the lid. Take care not to get paint all the way up to the metal at the end of the brush, which is called the ferrule, as this can damage the brush as it dries. Just about halfway up the bristles is fine. Put the paint onto your palette to control how much is on your brush, and then we can start applying it onto our model. You can be really messy at this stage. Just make sure you get McCrag blue into every little nook and cranny and flat surface. You'll notice that the first coat might seem to struggle to stick to the plastic. Don't worry. Just keep going and cover as much as you can. Once the first coat is dry, apply a second coat in the exact same way. You'll find the coverage of the paint is much better this time around. And when that's dry, apply a third coat if you think you need it. The end result should look something like this, with the model covered evenly in blue. Well done, you've just undercoated your first model. And now your Ultramarine's captain is well on his way to being painted. All right, with the model fully undercoated, we're now going to start a base coat. Base coating is what we call it when we're blocking in the main colors of our model. The paint is normally a bit more pigmented than usual, and this allows us to cover over the detail a lot easier. For our first paint, we'll be using Abaddon Black, a base paint, and then picking out the inside of the cloak, gun casing, ribbing between the armor panels, and the loincloth. I've chosen to paint the inside of the cloak and loincloth black here, because I feel that it makes it a lot easier to paint. If you would like to paint them a cream color, you can use Rakarth Flesh. When painting the inside of the cloak and armor ribbing, I'm just taking a bit more care so that I don't paint on the blue armor panels. If you do make a mistake here, just tidy back up with the previous colors. And there we go, with the Abaddon Black applied, we've done our first base coat. Now to move on to the next one. I'm now going to paint all of the details that I want to be gold. For this, I'll be using Retributor Armor, which is a metallic paint. So, I'm going to pick out the Aquila on the chest, right knee detail, any trinkets I can find, shoulder trim and wings, and power fist detail, as well as the detail on top of his backpack, which is called an iron halo. Just as before, I'll be as careful as I can be when picking these out. If I make a mistake, I'll just tidy back up with the previous colors. With the gold done, I'm going to move on to doing the silver details next. Okay, I now need to pick out all of the silver details, and for this, I'll be using lead belcher. I'm looking to paint the working metal areas of the gun, power fist, and any other little rivets and working metal areas on the rest of the armor. Just take a bit extra care with these details and try to be as neat as you can. 
Once you've finished picking out these details, I would advise changing the water in your water pot. This is because it will be full of small metallic flakes and we don't want to get any of these into the rest of our paints. Okay, our metallic details are done. Now we just need to pick out the rest of the base coats. We're almost done with our base coats, just a few more little details to do. Our next ones will be the tassels and wax seals that we can find and we're using Scream of Pink to do this. Nice and easy details to do, just take your time and be as neat as you can. Once that is done, we need to paint the outside of our cloak as well. Because this is a larger flat area, just remember to let your first layer dry completely before coming back to do another. This will help to avoid any unwanted texturing that may happen if you continuously paint the same area when it's wet. Nice and easy details to do, just take your time and be as neat as you can. Awesome! Scream of Pink has really pumped some color onto our model and he's starting to look great. Next up is the skin and parchment that we can see. We're using the same paint for both of these areas. We'll be using Rackarth Flesh. Be as neat as you can around the previously painted details. Don't worry if you don't cover the area straight away with this paint. Just make sure the entire area has paint on it, wait for it to dry completely, and then come back to do another coat. Repeat this until you have a nice solid base coat. Rakoth Flesh takes a couple of layers to get full coverage, but it's totally worth it as it looks so good when completed. Our final detail to pick out on the Marine is the leather. So this will be any leather pouches or holsters that we can find as well as his belt. For this, we're using Katachan Flesh. Once we're done with that, we then need to paint the soil that we can see on the base. We're using Katachan Flesh for this as well. Right, with that done, there's just one more base coat to go. The final detail to base paint is the rock that he is standing on. For this, we're using Mechanicus Standard Grey. This is a great contrasting color to our brown that we've used on the soil and really helps to make the base pop out. Make your way around the base, picking out all of the rocks and debris that you can see. When your first layer is dry, remember to do another in order to get good coverage. As a side note here, when you get round to painting your Eliminator Sniper, you can also use Mechanicus Standard Grey to paint his cloak. Okay, that's all of our base coats done. Our Space Marine Captain looks awesome. We're now going to add a shade to him in order to tie all of the details together. The final thing we're going to do is apply Agrax Earthshade to the entire miniature. This paint is different to the others because it is a shade paint. Shade paints are very thin and are designed to slightly tint flat surfaces of the miniature while settling into recesses. You'll notice how this creates depth on the miniature by darkening down those recessed areas. Applying a shade is a quick and easy way to really take your paint job up a notch. We won't need to add any water to this paint. Just take it straight from the pot, making sure there isn't too much on your brush. Agrax Earthshade works over many different base coats, so we can apply it over the whole model, even the base. When you're doing an all over shade like this, work in small sections. We do this because it gives us enough time to fix any areas where we might have applied too much paint. You'll know when you've applied too much paint because you'll see the paint pooling in recesses and on larger flat surfaces, thus clogging up the awesome details of your model. Don't worry though, fixing it is really easy. Just dry off your brush and soak up the excess paint with your dry bristles. Once the entire model has had Agrax Earthshade over it, let it stand and dry for around 30 minutes. When it's completely dry, just as a finisher, you can paint the base room as well. You can choose any color for this really, it's completely up to you. I'm going to pick Abaddon Black because I think it frames the miniature nicely on the gaming table. Congratulations, you've painted your first Space Marine of the Angels of Death kill team. You can follow these exact steps for the rest of the members of the kill team as well. Okay, so just like how we did with our Space Marine Captain, the first thing that we need to do is an undercoat. For our Plague Marine, we'll be using Death Guard Green as our undercoat. This paint is a perfect choice for us as it also happens to be the main color of our Plague Marines. So it will act as our base coat for the power armor. Try to avoid painting the same area repeatedly and let your first layer dry completely. Once it's done, come back to do another and repeat the process until you have a nice solid undercoat. Right, with the undercoat done, we'll now pick out all of the armor trim with Balthazar Gold. Be as neat as you can here and try to avoid getting it onto the power armor. If you do, as always, just tidy back up with the previous color. Once the armor trim is done, there are a few extra areas on the weapon that we can pick out as well, mainly the handles, some trims, as well as the back casing. 
All right, that's our Balthazar gold done and it looks great. Now to move on to the silver details. I'll now move on to the silver metallics and I'm using lead belcher for this. We're looking to paint the working metals of the gun as well as the backpack and any other little areas that you think would be silver metallic. If you're lost for where these are, you can always check out the box art for inspiration. When you're finished with that, just like how we did with the Space Marine, change out your water in your water pot, as we don't want any metallic flakes in the rest of our paints. Okay, that's our metallics done. Let's crack on with the rest of the base coats. Right, with metallics done, I'm now going to use Abaddon Black to pick out the gun casing and any piping that I can find. Black will show up really starkly on any other details, so just try to be neat with this and don't forget to tidy up with the previous colors if you make a mistake. Awesome, you'll notice that your Plague Marine is really starting to come together at this point. Time to move on to some of the more gribbly bits. Okay, next up I'll be using Rakarth Flesh to paint the little Plague Demon that is known as a Nurgling, as well as any horns and teeth that I can find on the armor of this model. This particular Plague Marine might not have teeth, but you'll definitely find some on the other members of his kill team. So just use Rakarth Flesh for those. Remember that even though Rakarth Flesh is a base paint, it's quite thin, so you'll need a few coats to get good coverage. That one paint has really made the Nurgling pop out and look great. All of the Nurglings are actually my favorite things about the Plague Marine kill team. All right, I'm now going to focus on all of the slimy goo and gunk that I can find on the model. For this, I'll be using Avalanche Sunset. There are a lot of previously painted details near these, so I'm just going to take my time and try to be as neat as I can with these details. Slime and gunk can be found on just about all of the Plague Marines. It doesn't just have to be Avalanche Sunset either. Feel free to paint it whatever color you choose. The advantage of Avalanche Sunset is that it clashes really nicely with the green power armor, so it helps to make it stand out even more. Next up will be the tongue of the Nurgling. For this, I'll be using Scream of Pink. It's a smaller detail than just about everything else that we've painted. So, take your time when doing this and try to be as neat as you can be. A good tip when trying to be neat is to brace your painting hand against something. There are a few ways to do this, but I'll show you two that are more common. Firstly, you can try to keep your wrists next to each other like this, and you'll find that your hands are far more steady. The other method is to brace some of your fingers of your painting hand against either the painting handle or your other hand. This is the method that I do. I find that if I brace my fingers like this, they act as a little pivot point for me and I can keep my hands steady. Play around with these two methods and see what works for you. Once done with the tongue, just pick out all the fleshy and tentacly bits that you can find on the model as well. Screamer Pink has really made those fleshy bits come to life and look awesome. Plague Marines are so much fun to paint. We're now going to use Corex White to paint all of the little fungal infection-like details that we can see coming out of the armor and on various other details of the model. Again, these are smaller than most other details, so take your time with the process and be as neat as you can. Right, with those done, just a few more base coats to go. Next up, we'll be painting the base itself as well as the loincloth. For these, we'll use Katachan Flesh. This will help to tie it in with our Space Marine kill team and make it look like both kill teams are fighting in the same area. Little details like this really go a long way in telling a story and bringing out the character in your models. Once the base is done, then we just need to pick out the loincloth as well. All right, with the loincloth and base picked out, there's just one more base coat to go. The final detail to base coat will be the rock that our Plague Marine has stood on. Just the same as with our Space Marine Captain, we'll paint the rock with Mechanicus Standard Grey. And there we go, our Plague Marine is fully based and looks great. Okay, we're moving on to the shade paint now, and our first will be Carabo Crimson. We're going to use this paint over the Nurgling and Fungal Infection details that we can find. Just like before, when using a shade paint, do each area at a time and watch out for any pooling. If you see any, dry off your brush and soak up the excess paint. The next shade paint will be Agrax Urshade, and we'll use this to go over all of the rest of the details on the model, including the base. Try to avoid any areas where you've used Carabo Crimson, and remember to paint in sections and look out for any pooling. Once you've covered the rest of the details, leave the model to dry for around 30 minutes. When it's completely dried, you can then use Abaddon Black to paint the rim of the base. And there we go. You've completely painted your first Plague Marine. You can use the exact same steps to paint the rest of the models in your Plague Marine kill team. In this video, we've shown you how to paint the Angels of Death Plague Marines kill teams. 
so that you can get them on the gaming board in no time at all. We've had a lot of fun with this video, and we hope it's given you the inspiration to get your own Kill Teams painted. For more painting videos, head over to our YouTube channel. If you need more help, you can always head to one of our Warhammer stores where our friendly staff will be more than happy to help. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.